Hello everyone. I wanted to build off of our last tutorial where we talked about conversion of metric units and discuss how we convert units when there are powers or exponents involved because this is a conversion that trips students up a little bit when they're first trying to do these unit conversions. So for example suppose that I want to convert 920 cubic millimeters to cubic centimeters instead. Um, some students that I see try this type of conversion for the first time try doing the following. They start out by writing their given information like we've been talking about and they figure well I have 920 cubic millimeters. I know that there are 10 millimeters in every centimeter. But then they realize what well, my units are cubed and so let me just cube the units in my conversion factor and do the math and then that's precisely what they do. They say okay 920 cubic millimeters divided by 10 cubic millimeters times 1 centimeter cubed our units cancel and they end up with 92 cubic centimeters. The problem unfortunately is that this is wrong. All right, and I'll explain why it's wrong in a minute. I want you to consider the following. All right, let's pretend we have a cube. Okay, now this cube has sides that each measure one centimeter. Okay, if I wanted to calculate the volume of this cube in units of centimeters cubed, well, we know that volume is length times width times height, so that would be one centimeter multiplied by one centimeter multiplied by one centimeter, and I get one centimeter cubed. Okay, but suppose that I want to calculate the volume of the same cube, but now I want to express it in units of millimeters cubed. Well, what I'm going to have to do is convert each of these sides from units of centimeters to millimeters and then calculate my volume like I did when I was calculating it in centimeters cubed. Well, if we do that conversion, we know that for every one centimeter, there are 10 millimeters. So that means that each side of the cube is 10 millimeters long. So that means I have 10 millimeters on this side of the cube and 10 millimeters on that side of the cube. And so these millimeter quantities are what I would have to multiply together to get the volume expressed in units of millimeters cubed. And so that would be 10 millimeters times 10 millimeters times 10 millimeters, which is 10 to the third power, or 10 cubed, millimeters cubed, or if I wanted to express this ex exponential quantity as a whole number, that would be 1,000 millimeters cubed. So that means that this volume of 1 centimeter cubed and 1,000 millimeters cubed have to equal each other because we're still talking about this same cube. And so that means that 1 cubic centimeter is actually equal to 1,000 cubic millimeters. Or if I take that back to exponential notation, one centimeter cubed is equal to 10 to the third millimeters cubed. In other words, what I had to do is for me to convert a volume that was in units of centimeters cubed and convert it to millimeters cubed, I had to cube both the one, you can think of this as cubing one, so one cubed centimeters cubed, but we know that one cubed is still one, that's going to be equal to 10 cubed millimeters cubed or 1000 millimeters cubed. So applying what we just learned here, back to the conversion I gave you guys to start the slide, if I want to convert 920 millimeters cubed, 
then basically it's true that there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter, but if I'm going to cube the units, I have to cube the numbers that go with them as well. Then my units will cancel, and basically this will be 920 divided by 10 to the third or 1,000, right? And that's going to give me an answer in centimeters cubed. Well, 920 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.920 centimeters cubed. So this would also apply if our metric units were squared. I'd have to square both of the numbers associated with the conversion factor, just like we had to cube the numbers associated with these cubic units that we were converting this time around. Now, another thing I wanted to talk to you about was a little bit more of an expansion on what we did regarding dimensional analysis in the last tutorial as well. A lot of unit conversions aren't necessarily accomplished with one single conversion factor when we do dimensional analysis. But the good thing about dimensional analysis is we can sort of stack these conversion factors together and set up our math entirely before we ever do the calculation. And that allows us to sort of be more efficient when we calculate. Instead of having to set up one proportion, solve it, get a number, then take that answer, apply a new proportion, solve it, and then take that second answer, and so on. Basically, we can set up our math in one long line and then just go to the calculator and just multiply and divide as necessary. So let me go and actually demonstrate. Suppose that I want to convert 2.05 times 10 to the fifth seconds into years. Okay. Again, remember that for dimensional analysis, what we want to do is we want to start off by writing our given information. So that's 2.05 times 10 to the fifth seconds. Now, I'm not going to worry about trying to find a conversion factor, one single conversion factor that goes from seconds to years. I mean, I suppose if we wanted to, we could find one if we use the internet or, you know, found some other sources. But let me just go by conversion factors that I know regarding time units. For example, all right, here comes our first conversion factor. I know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. Okay, my second units cancel, and so far I'm in units of minutes. But the answer is supposed to be in years. And so I'm still not there yet. I also know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, well, now we're in units of hours. Okay, still not up to my final units of years, but we'll get there. Let's just be patient. Uh, I know that there are 24 hours in one day, and that will cause my hour units to cancel almost there because I also know that there are 365 days in one year. Okay, so notice that now using conversion factors that I know that are common knowledge regarding units of time, I've managed to set up math that will get me from this conversion of seconds to years once I just pull out the calculator and do the math as necessary. Now the way that this would actually work is you would take the 2.05, multiply by 1, multiply by 1, multiply by 1, multiply by 1, all right? And then what you're going to do is divide by each of the denominators. So that answer that you get, you would divide by 60. That would give you an answer. Divide by 60 again. That would give you another answer divide by 24, and then divide by 365 on your calculator. If you do this properly, then you should get 6.50 times 10 to the negative third of a year. All right. Or if we wanted to express this as a decimal, that would be 0.00. .00 six five of a year okay so this is an example of how sometimes we would set up 
as I said, multiple conversion factors, multiple ratios between units that express the same quantity. Okay, now we're going we're gonna to do additional problems in class. We're going to take additional examples. Once again, as always, I'll be sort of navigating around the classroom to see how you guys are doing. If you have questions about this, then email tonight, or if you want, speak to me tomorrow when we get into class, and we'll clear up those questions and make sure that you guys are okay with this. All right, so have a good night, and I will see you guys.